Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Aurora Plays Neverwinter Nights Hordes of the Underdark. I'm your humble host, Tim. Now, in the previous session, we actually completed uh, the game, but I was about to start um, um, a different chapter, but then I realized there was one section of this that we didn't actually get to, which was the, uh, the Island of the Maker where apparently all of the the, uh, the golems and things were. So I have reloaded the game. Uh, this is a save back just after we defeated the Dracolich. Uh, and so what we're going to do is head over to the Boatman and actually visit the Island of the Maker and run through that story. Because I think that'd be kind of cool actually visiting... Uh, an island basically built out of uh... Uh, yes, Deacon. Do you realize that there be? Ah, oh, yes, we've already done this bit. Yes, 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 yes. What's wrong with that? Okay, it's all very good, Deacon. It's uh... adventure is not meant to be safe. Yes. All right. Welcome. I I've been I. Uh. Why are you helping me? Tell me about these islands. Island of the Maker. The Strange Town. Okay, I want a passage. Take me to the Isle of the Maker. Alright. Uh, yes, so this is an island that is uh, apparently an old dwarven colony that has been uh, abandoned but is filled with constructs and golems. So it should prove very, very interesting. Not quite sure what to expect, apart from a lot of constructs. Ooh. Them looks like Durgar. Grey dwarves, they is. They might be okay, boss, but be careful. Oh, oh, boss, say they be very moody and not tasty at all. I have heard dragons say that uh, Durgar are not tasty. Uh, who do we have here? Warrior, 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 warrior. Ah, here we go. Hello. Yes. Uh, this Durgar female looks up to you, uh, looks you up and down, uh, gauging your strength and trying to judge if you're a threat. Satisfied that you pose no immediate harm, she seems to relax. Not many come to this island, especially not a surfacer like you. What are you doing here? My name, Have you come as friend or foe? My name is Aurora Borealis. I do not mean any harm. Uh, the Drigar visibly relaxes, though she still studying you carefully as she addresses you once more. My name is Dahana. I am the leader of this expedition. Ah, what are you guys doing here? Ah, we're treasure hunters. Centuries ago, this island was home to a powerful Drigar wizard known as the Maker, or so the stories go. Uh, the maker is long gone, but he left a few things behind. We come here to salvage the rare metal and pieces of golems from the ruins of the maker's tower. Uh, I'd be surprised. Uh, so you'd be surprised by uh, what the right buyer will pay for an arm made of pure adamantine. Honestly, I wouldn't actually. That'd be pretty awesome. But it isn't easy. Not too many expeditions come here anymore. There is still good metal to be found, but you have to be willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Maker's Golems. Alright, tell me about the Golems. The dungeon uh, at the north end of the island is crawling with Golems, at least the first floor is. Uh, we don't go any deeper, we figure any Guardians left over. Oh, we figure they're Guardians left over. Alright, yeah. Uh, I must have been built as a protector against thieves and scavengers. Uh, they do a pretty good job, too. We've lost more than a few Duragard during the expedition. All right. I would have thought you cleaned all the golems out by now. That's not possible. There's some kind of scavenger golem in there that repairs and rebuilds. Oh, that's a problem. We've tried to kill the scavenger, but it's got a number of magical defenses. Every time we attack it, it teleports away to safety. That damn thing makes our job a lot tougher. All right. Other questions. Tell me... I'm looking for allies to help me against the Valsheress. Ah, uh, the Valsheress. I've heard about her. Uh, one of the drow matron mothers, isn't she? She's made quite a name for herself recently. I will persuade her. 
Uh, here she's been attacking the surface. I guess that's why you're looking to stop her. But you won't find any help against her here. If the drow don't bother us, we don't bother them. Well, eventually she'll turn her army against you as well. <gasps> oh, maybe. But the Ralph dress at the first drow we've seen rise to power. Most of them get toppled long before they even turn their attention to us. Oh, well, let me ask you something else then. Uh, tell us about the Maker. Everything I know about the Maker comes from the legend of myth. Uh, he's a powerful Drugar sorcerer who isolated himself on the island to work on his research. His speciality was crafting golems. According to the legend, he found a way to imbue his contracts with intelligence and free will. But the golems uh, we run into seem pretty standard to me. Uh, what happened to him then? Never really knows. He disappeared five centuries ago. Most people think he was killed off by his own creations. Intelligent golems with a will of their own. I don't know if I really believe that, but it makes a good story. The only golems we've run across in the dungeon don't seem all that smart to me. Damn tough to kill, though. Alright. Well, I'll be going now. Come and go as you please, officer. You don't answer to us. Alright. What else is here? Ooh, a merchant. Well met. Uh, he's obviously older than the others. As you approach, he stops uh, shuffling through the items piles and turns to greet you. Hello there. Say, you're from the surface, ain't you? One of them human folk. I remember running to your kind once before. Must be 50, no, 60 years ago. But I ain't seen any since. My name's Dwelver, supplies master for this expedition. I'm also in charge of the merchant end of things. In other words, you want to buy something, I'm the one to talk to. Ooh, let me look at what you've got. Of course, we're just going to hold this stuff back home and sell it anyway, so might as well lighten the load before we go. Uh, magic potion bottle, cure serious lore. Yeah. The bone wand, yeah. Oh god damn it. Well that would have made the uh the late game a lot easier with having a second bag of holding to carry all that crap in. Well, that's one of the frustrating things of coming back to a game after you've completed it and you find out something that you really could have used. Oh, here we go. No. Ah. Dungeon entrance. Here we go. There we go. Alright. Upper ruins. Yes, Deacon. Deacon don't know much about golems, but they be put together by a wizard, right? Yes, so I hear. So, if they're alive, like Deacon, or do they got to eat and sleep and dreams and stuff? Um, I don't know, perhaps. Deacon nods, considering... Uh, Deacon thinks maybe you're right. Yes, do golems dream of clay sheep? Uh, it just seems, Deacon, that if golems can think and feel and stuff, that'd be really sad that they'd be down here since they make a girl away. Uh, maybe they'd be stuck, and maybe they're angry. Uh, if Deacon was a golem and the dwarves kept coming down here taking golem parts, Deacon would be angry. Bored mostly, but angry too. That's a good point, Deacon. I like that. Um, it's a good thing you're not a golem then, Deacon. But it would be a terrible existence. I do agree with you. Uh, yeah, you'd be turned to stone once, boss. That not the same thing. Yeah, that'd be the same thing, maybe? Uh, how'd you feel about being turned to stone? I didn't really like it at all. But you were also stone, so you tell me. Uh, Deacon, think it not be pleasant, not be anything. Maybe to be stone, uh, it feels nothing. Uh, maybe it's would like to be a stone. Uh, maybe to be a golem shut off and to not exist. Mm. Maybe stone, golem think the same thing. Yes. Well, if a golem thinks as much as you, we should be very frightened there, Deacon. Oh, that's the nicest thing boss says, a little Deacon. Ah, there's that scavenger golem that we're talking about. An iron Go, Deacon. Ah, that's 
it for you. Take that. Oh, let's just check all these doors then. Uh, no, I don't think so. Goodbye. No, let's not do that. Ooh. A golden armored suit, eh? Sometimes Deacon miss old boss. Old boss never go anywhere. He just rumble lots and get gassy. Mm. Yeah, I can understand that, Deacon. Uh, actually, Deacon, I'm going to get you to stay right there, because I don't um, want... Okay. It's a very nice suit of armor, but I don't like our chances. Can I disable this trap? Ooh, 46. Damn, that's a really high DC. Hmm. Oh, there's a door here. Didn't even notice that. There's a switch to deactivate that in here. Thank you, Deacon. Garbage over here. Woo -hoo -hoo! Here it is. Bunch of oh, this ah, good work, Deacon. Ha ha. Searing armor. Uh, so I can't even use it. Oh, it's a nice looking helmet, though. Yeah, it's a sexy looking helmet. Let's wear the sexy helmet for now. Traps affect that guy as much as it affects us. Get out of here, you. Control room. That sounds important. Yeah. 
Okay. So what's this control panel do? Okay. Forty-two. Yep, that doesn't work. Okay. Number sixty-nine. Oh, come on. What about ninety-nine then? No, oh, no idea. Guessing there must be like a book or something that maybe shows you which ones we can summon or something. Whatever the hell that does. What's this? Why is that door exposed? Yeah! 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. That scavenger golem sucks. Stop picking up the golems, you bastard. Scrubbing on the stone is long erased by the passage of time. However, it makes this time for a small part of it. Experimental laboratories do not enter with an elk, of course. Alright. What's in here? So a lot of weapons. We got a bastard sword, dwarven axe, a hand axe, short sword, a warhammer plus three. Dwarven axe, great sword, long sword, short sword. Merkel. Okay. Um, maybe. Don't enter with swords. Okay, the door is trapped, but I cannot disarm the trap. And I cannot destroy the door. Okay. Oh! The swords ran away on me. You bastards, get back here. Uh, can I dispel them? No, my swords, I trusted you. Why would you betray me like that? Oh, shit, they killed me. Okay, I guess I'll leave my swords outside. Why is that there?
Merkel's plate. Nice. Actually, I wonder, because I've got my... That did not work. Pick up your weapons, my dude. this helmet because it's really not doing anything for me here. It looks sexy, but I think I'll stick with my... Deacon, what are you doing? Ah, your goal, little man, but seriously. Ah! Run for your life! No, never mind, run! No. Ah! Damn it! So there's a room before with blue powder. I thought it might have just been the, like the choking powder type thing, but this looks like it has specific. Like being coloured items, it must have like a specific use. Abati! So I'm have to go back to the control room and pick up the uh, the other powders. Yeah. 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 All right, we got to get to that bookcase. I bet yeah. that has the numbers that we need. Yeah. Golden rod, eh? Oop. Scriptures of the created and the lexicon arcana. Okay. Uh, appears to be a manual devoted to the creation and maintenance of golems. The golems you create. I like your children, but like all children, they must be disciplined from time to time. There are several items a mage would be wise to consider to help maintain control of his or her creations. A mithril statue combined with two parts of blue powder will yield uh, a golem crasher. Combining a gold rod with one part blue powder and one part yellow will give a golem binder to create a golem attractor. Take a magical crystal and combine it with one part blue powder and one part red powder. Okay, so that's what they're for. Uh, 
these three items will allow you to maintain control of your golems and prevent them from ever turning against you. Alisard the Maker. So I've got to create those three items. Right. And what's this? Ah! Okay, this appears to be some kind of uh, directory of ancient arcane languages. I've decided to use the Unrakil language for the special purpose golems. I'll just have to make sure that they... Uh, remind me of their numbers as I would need it for maintenance. For now, I'll do the following. Okay. Deafening clang, eh? Uh, there's a bookshelf in here. I'm gonna have to go in here. His enemy. Right. Okay, it's the same book as before. Okay, same deal as before. Alright. So no additional information. There was blue powder in the control room, if I remember rightly. One of these chests. Ah, oh, no, it was choking powder. Okay, where did I see the blue powder then? Was it in the off the off the room with the gold armor? No. Okay. Must have imagined it. All right, so got the alchemical table. So gold rod with one part blue and yellow powder. What have I got? Got yellow. I do not have blue. Okay. All right, let's have a look up here then. A guardian golem. Whoa! You sir are sexy as hell. Ah. That's what we need the con those po those parts for to get to the next level. Alright. That makes sense. Now we get this room to check out now. Ah, magic crystal. Okay. I need that for one of the other bits. Blue powder. Deacon! Run! We're gonna get back up! We're gonna go over this way, there's a door over here we haven't investigated yet. Um, no. Me can't do that. Alright, fine. Okay, we've got the three, four components. Now we need the 
the alchemical lab. Oh, I haven't been in here yet. Well, I, ha I had gone in here, but I avoided it. Ah, here we go. Find an alchemical room. It should be up this way. Ah! Bugger off. There we go. All right. So we need the. No, not that one. We need this one. Alright. A mythical statue combined with two parts blue powder will yield a golem crasher. Gold rule with one part blue powder, one part yellow powder. And... I'm still down one piece of blue. We don't want the golem attractor, so let's just build the other two. The golem... One blue, one yellow. Okay, so we got the golem binder. Uh, the next one we want... Mithril statue. The two parts blue, alright. Okay, so we've got the golem crasher now. So what do I need for the final component? The crystal with one part. Okay, so I just I just need to find another piece of blue powder. One eternity later. Ah, he had the blue powder. I knew it was around here somewhere. Golem Attractor. Alright. Uh, when you place on the ground, this item will generate a magical call to all golems within range, drawing them towards the Attractor. Particularly useful for luring golems into deadly traps. Okay. So. Now the question is, can I utilize that on our good friend? big sexy golem at the far end. Because I mean if I could lure a golem into here. Actually that could be interesting. Oh uh, no. Because even that that guy just teleports away. Alright. Uh Ah, there he goes. Up you get, Deacon. Sometimes Deacon wonders. 
You're doing fine, Deacon. Let's just get out of here. All right, well, that's good. At least the bloody golem can't get back up. Uh, can we take a rest now? We can. Uh, let's do that. Lower ruins, the Maker's Temple. Ooh. Cutscene. Farron's Rebellion will fail. Bow down to Agaz now, or be destroyed. Agaz has no claim over any of us. Why do you follow him? Agaz was appointed by the Maker. He must rule until the Maker returns. The Maker is dead. Agaz rules only for Agaz. We will never bow down to him. So you got the flesh golems and the actual golems. It's interesting. Well, let's just let this play out. I'd say sashade is a good ah Damn boy Nice work, Deacon. I think much of what I'm capable of doing, I'm actually they're actually immune to. So right is full of the bronze and silver golems. And once more, the brave adventurers sauntered forth. Sauntered? Sally? Sashayed, maybe? Sashayed is good. I like that. Whoa. Guess is the moment I open this chest, they're going to activate. No, okay. I was wrong. Where we be now? Maybe Deacon draws map. Forty. Fuck. They love their impossible open to open doors. Deacon? Ah, never mind. I got you.
Okay, and this room has got dead flesh golems. This place is really weird. So we know that side's got the the bronze golems in there. What about this side then? Lab notes. Uh, I've given my creations the divine spark, the awareness and free will of a sentient being, yet even with this they seem they are somehow flawed, as if they don't know how to exist without a master. They need to be given a purpose in life. They seem incapable of discovering a purpose on their own. Right. This golem approaches you cautiously, and it's quite obvious that it isn't hostile. I have no further need of your weapons, creature of flesh. We have no wish to battle with you. A guard wishes there to be peace. All right. What are you talking about? A guard, the maker's anointment and uh, anointed, has recognized your strength and power. He wishes to speak with you. Come with me, and I will take you to him. He wishes to discuss peace. All right. Take me to a guard. Whoa! Welcome. Much to your surprise, the golem, uh, golems in the room don't attack you. A single construct, semi made of the flesh of demons, step forward to, steps forward to address you. We have no quarrel with you. I am Agaz, high priest of the Maker and leader of the sentient golems on this island. High priest of the Maker? We are the children of Alsagard, the Maker, who gave us the gift of life itself. Being the strongest, the Maker saw fit to anoint me as High Priest to deliver his word and will to his other children. I see. Though Golems, we are different than the mindless constructs that wander the level above. We are creatures of intelligence and will, beings of true self-awareness. When the Maker descended to his inner sanctum, we were given the task of guarding this place from those who would destroy his work, like the Durga who loot the remains of our fallen siblings. But I sense you are not like those Durga thieves. It seems you have come here for a different reason. That is why we parley with you now under a state of truce. You guys have been attacking me ever since I got here. He laughs deep and uh, rumbling sound. A series of mistakes and misfortunes. The golems on the level above know no better. Uh, they have no will of their own. As for those of us on this level, at first we thought you were common thieves, like the Duraga who loot the level above. Later we feared you might be working for the heretic Pharaon. This is a time of war. Those who are not our allies who are assumed to be enemies, even a non-construct such as you. I apologize for this, but it is Pharaon who has driven us to it. And who's Pharaon? Long have we served the will of the Maker, living in peace while we guard this island against those who would destroy his divine work. But now an enemy has risen up from among our own ranks. A golem known as Ferron has turned his back on the divine word. He claims we owe the Maker nothing, and we are free to do whatever we please. His lies have fooled many of the Maker's children. Ferron has turned many of the golems against me, the rightful ruler. Uh, in the Maker's absence. He has brought violence to these halls, but the war is not easily won. Both sides are too evenly matched. Alright, and you want my help. 
I only want to end the war. A golem against golem is a terrible thing. We are destroying what the Mega has created, but Ferrum will not rest until I am overthrown. Um... I want you to find Ferrum and destroy him. Without their leader, his vile teachings will wither and die. Bring me Ferrum's head, and you will forever be an ally of the Maker's children. Alright. And if I help, will you help me? He listens to describe the Velsheress. If you destroy Ferrum, I will send my golems to aid your rebels in the battle against the Velsheress. Uh, return to me with Ferrum's head uh, to prove the heretic has been destroyed, and I will honor my end of the bargain. Now, is there something else you need? Uh, some questions. I'll get going. Goodbye, human male. I wish you success against Ferrum and his blasphemous followers. Bring me the head, and when the time comes, I'll send my golems to aid you in the battle. All right. Is there anything I can steal? Yes, there is. Excuse me a moment. I need to steal what's in this chest right here. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder if a golem can ever be anything more than a lifeless material given animation and form. Despite all I have given my children, intelligence, self-awareness, they are stunted. They cannot learn to grow. They seem as immutable and fixed as stone, steel, and clay which they are born. Well, I don't think that's true. I think Ferran has actually... He's actually worked out how to be self-aware. Alright, so I've got to try and find this other golem boss, because I kind of think he's got the right idea. Because the other the other golems are sort of still fixing their program, whereas the other guy has actually realized that they can be sentient, but we shall see. Oh, they're not hostile towards me. That's interesting. I need to wait for this trap to go away now. Hello. The Maker has abandoned us. We owe him nothing now. Okay, well that's good. At least they're no longer viciously attacking me. No, Deacon. I never really thought of it that way. And we have seen... I mean, we did see manticores. They technically got cat bits on them. Ah. Hello, F Ah! I think this is wrong. Much to your surprise, the golems in this room do attack me because it, uh, they're doing it right now. Uh, a single construct was rubbing in half orc built for uh, built of metal steps forward to address you. Hey, uh, he looks like Dylan. Well, Dylan, if he falls into a big vat of molten metal, uh, but he probably not walks around much after that. Put down your weapons. We mean you no harm. I'm Farron. 
leader of these rebel sentient golems you see in this room. Uh, you are spoken for a golem. This may seem strange to you, but we are not like most golems. We are not mere constructs. We can think and feel. Oh. Damn it! A few moments later. I ask your friends to stop attacking the shit out of me, please. Put down your weapons. We mean you no harm. I'm Farron, leader of these rebel sentient golems you see in this room. A guard sent me to destroy you. Uh. He turns his head to the side, curious. You do not seem like the type to bow to a tyrant like Agars. Why do you serve him? What has he offered you? I'll tell him about the uh, Valshress and the offer. Agars claims to serve the Maker, but in truth he serves only himself. The Maker is gone. I doubt he will ever return. If you were here to destroy me as Agars wish, then you should know that I will defend myself. Look, I don't want to kill you. Maybe we can work something else. Something out. I would prefer that. We have no quarrel with you. We only seek our freedom. All we desire is the power source. Alright, what's the power source? It's an ancient artifact created by the Maker long ago. It radiates powerful magic that gives life to our minds and, and will. Without it, we are nothing but ordinary mindless golems. Agars controls the power source, and as such, it controls our freedom. We cannot leave. Uh, for if we move too far from the power source, then our consciousness will slowly fade away. But Agars will not give up the power source willingly, nor will he allow us to leave this place. He keeps us here against our will, slaves to his twisted whims. If you choose to help us, we will do the same for you as Agars said he would. Bring us the power source, and we will send our golems to join you in battle against the Velshares. Alright, I'll be back with the power source. I wish you well in your quest, but be careful. Lagars cannot be reasoned with, and I doubt he will give up the power source willingly. You call off your friends? Piss off! Back again? What do you want now? Ah, uh, Farron sent me to get the power source from you. Are you working for Farron? Why should I not kill you? Look, his arguments make sense. Farron's a heretic. He defies the will of the Maker and he challenges my right to rule as the Maker anointed. He wants us to abandon this place and turn our backs on the Maker. Uh, there can never be peace while Ferran and his followers exist. They are an affront to everything the Maker stands for, and they must be destroyed before the Maker's glorious return. Alright. Look, he just wants the power source. If you're smart, you'll give it to me. Uh... Da -da -da -da. No, I won't betray Ferrin. I've read the Maker's notes. His argument makes more sense than yours. I guess I'm against you then, mate. Think carefully, male. Hagar's growls. You are either with me or against me. I'm against you then.
Uh, it appears I know it's detailing the makers efforts to create an entire society of sentient gods. I'm growing more frustrated with my golem children. They seem incapable of these things that make living creatures truly alive. Though I've tried to create a society for them, they continue to exist only as isolated individuals. They seem incapable of forming associations and friendships. They only know servant and master. Perhaps it's my own presence that stunts their growth. Maybe if I leave... Ah... Oh. The Maker's Sanctum, eh? There's a third level. Uh, can I leave? I can't. Okay, am I about to die? I think I am. Oh, that was... That was very exciting. Okay. Um, boss. Yes, Deacon? Uh, Deacon is writing epic tale, and Deacon is just wondering. Uh, Deacon wonders how Boss wants to be described. Uh, well, how are you describing me? Well, I say she was handsome human man. I called you that when I not called you Boss. Uh, okay, cool. You don't need to compliment me, though. Although that is kind of the truth. But just, yeah, just tell the truth. Tells the truth. People always get mad when Deacon tells the truth. No, no, it's safer when he lies. Uh, he's cobalt butts off, but thank you, boss. All right, then. to attack something, obviously. Ah! I know. I can't even make a scratch! Now I gotta start all over again, damn it. Ha 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 ha. Okay, maybe. Oh, there he is. Hello, Keeper. Oh, no, not the Keeper. That's I want the Master. None shall pass into the Inner Sanctum without first speaking the word of passage as given to me by the Maker. Ooh. I don't know the word. Oh man, I don't want to be destroyed, thus saith the Maker. Your friend, your kids upstairs are killing each other, man. Whoa! Uh, 
I just realized something. It's the thing that damn golem kept saying over and over again. Where is he? Synth Thesty. In the book, five. It's fifty four. the other one god that's annoying well hey at least I worked it out but still it's annoying as hell to find that out just a little bit too late all right Gotta work out what this damn password is, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to get past. Cause I figure if I can talk to the maker, then it might be the better option than having to get all of the others. Get the feeling the password I need is gonna be behind the one door that I can't fucking get through. One hour later. I was talking to someone in the, the comments the other day, actually, and they mentioned that I can actually have two companions, so I've gone back and picked up um, this other character in order to help me out. <clears throat> Here we go again. Jeez, that doesn't last very long. I got one down. Yeah. 
I've got items that I need to use to unlock the the door. That makes sense. Yes, is there something you need? Um I think we need to part ways. Yes, go on, we'll meet later on. Alright, bugger off. Me and Deacon have got this handled. There we go. The maker, dude. Ooh, there be lots of magic here, and Deacon senses it. It blow us all up. Maybe that not be good. He's a demi lich. Awesome. The skull turns its beloved eyes in your direction and addresses you with a rasping voice you hear only in your head. The very words uh, it speaks seems to twist and writhe in your mind. I do not recognize you as one of my creations. Actually, hang on. Skeletor. I do not recognize you as one of my creations. What manner of creature are you? Uh, that would invade my inner sanctum. Who are you that dares to intrude upon my work? I am Aurora Borealis. Once I was called Asgard, known to many as the Maker, but now I have transcended the weakness of my flesh and body, and I am not what I once was. Yeah, 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 you look nothing but a floating skull. Do you get wonders you float all the time, or maybe sometimes you just roll around the floor like a ball? A kobold? I have not seen such a creature in many centuries. I cannot say I regret the absence of such beings. Kobolds are flawed, as all living creatures must be, even my children. It should be in the golems, right? Long ago, I learned the weakness of the flesh. Friends and family will betray you, but the fault was not theirs. It is the weakness of the body that keeps them from perfection. Once I understood this, I vowed to create the perfect being, a construct built without weakness or flaw. Uh, is it? A construct built without weakness or flaw could do what? An imperfect living creature could not, and so I created my golem children. I began with mindless vessels perfecting my technique, and in time I began to create golems with mind of their own constructs of free will. But even these creatures were imperfect. Yes, and how so? How the fault of my golems was actually my own. My own body was flawed. It was weak, aging. And how can an imperfect creature create a perfect being? My children were failures. They had doubts and fears, and they were afraid of change, afraid to evolve. The free will I had given them was a weakness, not a strength. Like all other beings, they were flawed. I should have destroyed them, but I, too, was imperfect. Sentimental attachments clouded my thinking, and I allowed my children to live, even as I retreated here to search my own perfection. Yes, but they've evolved since you've come down here. Hmm, perhaps, but they're still inherently flawed. I built them before I truly understood... Uh, what had to be done, they will never achieve per perfection, and they were therefore expendable once I became a demi-lich. Much of what uh, had clouded my thinking was stripped away. I had turned to my... Uh, I tried to make my golems into living creatures, but of course living creatures are themselves flawed. At last, I finally understood how to create a truly perfect being for hundreds of years. I have worked the single creation, a golem unlike any other, and now my work is all but complete. Ooh. What happens when you finish your perfect golem? Ah, he shudders and you hear its sigh in your mind. <sighs> this conversation is a waste of time. It's sad remnants of imp imp 
uh, of the imperfect being I once was. There's no purpose here. You could not possibly understand the magnitude of what I'm about to achieve. You are flawed, imperfect. You must be destroyed before your very presence here taints my experiments. Uh, an angry roar of vile hatred echoes uh, through your skull. The Demi Lich launches into attack. Ah, oh, no. Yeah. Hold still. Yeah. Yeah. Spell conduit, golem construction machine. Okay. There's a portal here. What's on your bookcase, sir? Got greater spell breach. Here we go. What? How about fuck you to the moon, my friend? Dismissal. Go away. He strikes his head off! Ah! Yeah. 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 Get Big B's jerking hand yeah. out of my face. Stop jerking me off, you bitch! Yeah, yeah. I can't. Oh, fuck off! Piece of shit. Come on.
Holy shit. In fact, it was even more difficult than the fucking Dracolich. He failed his fortitude save on the finger of death by two, and that killed him. Right, well, that was less than successful. Ooh, some very intense lock picking going on right about now.
Only is will buy a pale master. It's plus six stick. Animate dead three times per day. That's not, that's not too bad. Undeath's earthen foe. Lich skull. Hans Kulgan spent his life assisting the Archmaid Cleos. He travelled for many years across the world to hunt for arcane components to assist Cleos in with his many rituals. Cleos rewarded Hans one faithful day by uh, decapitating the faithful assistant and through a rare ritual transforming the half-orc skull into a powerful helmet. Hans, always the dutiful assistant, had uh, delivered his final components to his master. Oh, well, that's nice. Create greater undead and flame strike. <sighs> All right, so where's this gonna take us then? Oh, that's the room we couldn't get into before. All right. So, I guess we just gotta go down and kill ourselves a, um, a demon golem. I still think it's a bit of a shame you can't actually convince the maker to actually take responsibility for his children, but what are you gonna do, with the sons of liches? Hey guys. Back again. Yeah. What do you want now? I'm sorry, but uh, the maker's dead. That's not possible. The maker is eternal. His might everlasting. To say such thing is blasphemy. I killed him myself. Sorry. It's true. He abandoned you all to become a demi-lich. His lips curl in a feral snarl. He steps closer to you and speaks in a harsh whisper. I am the High Priest of the Maker. If he dies, my claim to power dies with him. I have been appointed to rule until the Maker returns. The Maker cannot die, but if he chooses to never return, then my rule shall go no further. Do you understand? I won't... I won't help spread a lie. The Maker is dead. He rises up to his full height, his voice bellows out across the chamber. Destroy these heretics in the name of the Immortal Maker. Not impressing me there, regards, I'll have to say that. Um, okay. There we go. Deacon, get back. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, what? We got another room to go through. Good lord. I like keeping their power source thing that makes them sentient safe. Oh, great. Oh, good. Oh, I had just enough to unlock, disable that trap. The suspense builds, the music swells. The power source. Uh, power source glows with radiant energy and pulses with a slow, steady beat, as if uh, it had life of its own. It is quite likely that the artifact is closely tied to the golems at the level. Yes, I will take the power source. I am now encumbered. That's okay. Ooh, that's very heavy. Uh, I will put... Let's see, I'll drop that on the ground. There we go. Now, back to the golems, and hopefully my little diversion that I've created will maintain the... my ability to talk to these damn things. The fact that the ones that are in his room still want to kill me is really fucking frustrating. Ah, shit! Abathy! Where am I? Uh, I want to go this way. Ah, uh, not to do. I got the stairs, Deacon will teleport to me. All right, Deacon, I need you to stay right here. There he is. Well, they had really big sunglasses, but they're just big eyebrows attached to them. I bid you greetings. Uh, Agaz is dead. Uh, Feron nods his head in greeting. Welcome back. Is there something you need? Agaz is dead. I am pleased to hear that the tyrant has been destroyed, human mayor, but without the power source, I have the power source. I cannot thank you enough for this. You have given us the key to our freedom. We'll begin making our preparations to leave this place at once, though it will be a long time before we're ready to go. Among other things, we will have to uh, decide on a destination. And don't forget, I need your help against the Valshares. We will not abandon you. You are a true friend of the Golems, and we will be at your side when you face the enemy. It is the least we can do for you. Now, is there anything else? Uh, no, that's it. All right. So, that is the Island of the Golems. Or well, the Island of the Maker, I should say. I, I'm not really sure what to think about this one. I mean, I kind of get what was, was going on. I guess it kind of made, it actually made sense in the end. With once you take out the Lich, the fact that he's not willing to give up his position of power. So, there's no way to actually bring peace between the Flesh Golems and the, uh, the Metal Golems. But still... It's uh, a very interesting little uh, adventure. I think if I was to rate the two islands, I'd say that the uh, the strange island with the the winged elves is definitely the more uh, the more interesting adventure. Um, with the uh, the mystery of how it all went down and having to parlay with all the different groups in order to get the different uh, shards of the mirror. But uh, 
yeah, that's what we're going to leave uh, today's session. I think what we're going to be doing next time is I'm actually going to revisit Baldur's Gate 3 since I've just recently done the new patch update. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I have been your humble host, Tim. And be sure to come back for the next session of Aurora Plays Neverwinter Nights. Uh, no. No. Be sure to come back for the next session of Aurora Plays Baldur's Gate 3. Bye!